But Daniel made up his mind that he would not defile himself, taint or dishonor himself, with the king's finest food or with the wine which the king drank. So he asked the commander of the officials that he might be excluded so that he would not defile himself. Now God granted Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the commander of the officials. And the commander of the officials said to Daniel, I'm afraid of my lord the king who has prearranged your food and your drink. For why should he, he see your faces looking more haggard than the young men who are your own age? Then you would make me forfeit my head to the king. But Daniel said to the observer, the overseer, who the commander of the officials had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days. Let us be given some vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the young men who eat the king's finest food be observed and compared by you. And deal with your servants in accordance with what you see. So the man listened to them in this manner and tested them for ten days. At the end of ten days, it seemed that they were looking better and healthier than all the young men who ate the king's finest food. So the overseer continued to withhold their fine food and the wine which they were to drink and kept giving them vegetables. I grew up in Kentucky, so that's the land of casseroles and barbecue and meat. So when I transitioned over to an entirely plant-based diet, I wasn't sure if I was gonna survive. And I actually became like a machine. I got up from being able to move about 300 pounds on the inverted leg sled to moving 585 pounds, 60 reps times five sets. To move that kind of weight, you need more than just energy. You also need strength. In other words, protein. I just couldn't believe that Dotsie, or anyone for that matter, could get enough protein eating only plants. I think one of the biggest misconceptions in sports nutrition is that we have to have animal protein, and in particular meat, to get big and strong and perform at a high level. That's just clearly not true. All that protein that you get when you eat a steak or a hamburger, where did it come from? It came from the plants that the cow ate. I was surprised to learn that all protein originates in plants. Cows, pigs, and chickens, it turns out, are just the middlemen. In fact, the largest study to compare the nutrient intake of meat eaters with plant eaters showed that the average plant eater not only gets enough protein, but 70% more than they need. Even meat eaters like me get roughly half of their protein from plants. But athletes need more protein than most people do. So I crunched the numbers from the study and realized that based on the amount of calories I was eating, I'd still be getting more than enough protein to build and maintain muscle. For example, one cup of cooked lentils or a peanut butter sandwich has about as much protein as three ounces of beef or three large eggs. But what about the quality of the protein? I'd always heard that plant-based protein was inferior. Proteins are strings of amino acids, and there are some amino acids our bodies can't make. Those are the essential amino acids. So we have to get them from food. And one of the arguments about animal-based proteins being superior is that plant-based proteins aren't complete, so you're not going to get all the amino acids. And that's a fallacy as well. Again, I was surprised to discover that every single plant contains all the essential amino acids in varying proportions. And when it comes to gaining strength and muscle mass, Research comparing plant and animal protein has shown that as long as the proper amount of amino acids are consumed, the source is irrelevant. When I made the switch to a plant-based diet, people, they were like, I don't know how you're gonna lift that much weight and you're not gonna be eating anything, you're gonna eat grass, like how are you gonna be strong? I qualified for my third Olympic team, you know what I'm saying? I broke two American records. I won the Pan Am Games. I was like, man, like, I think I should have done this a long while ago. Like, why didn't I research this before? Someone asked me, how could you get as strong as an ox without eating any meat? And my answer was, have you ever seen an ox eating meat? I stopped eating meat in 2005. Up to that time, I was 105 kilo. And now I'm 130 kilos. Also, at the same time, I set, like, four world records. 
So when I stopped eating meat, I got stronger and bigger. Okay, so I just go under here. Okay, yeah. Really take care of your, your back should really be straight. Get up. Oh, at 700 pounds, I could not move the yoke at all. It, didn't move. it felt like it was bolted to the ground. And that was just his warm up weight. When I was young, I had these fantasies of uh, being super strong, and if someone got trapped, being able to help them get out. For any guy watching that day, it wasn't just a car Patrick had crushed. It was a myth they'd been fed their entire lives. Steak, that's what a man eats. Made from stuff guys need. Eat like a man, man. There's no one that can relate to that better than I do because I've lived in that world. Steak is for man. Go meat! They showed us commercials, burgers, George Foreman with the grill. Yeah and the big sandwiches and all that stuff. Eat like a man and be full like a man. This is great, great marketing by the meat industry. Serious man food. Selling that idea that real men eat meat. You look like more of a man with a quarter pounder in your hand. But you got to understand that's marketing. That's not based on reality. <laughs> <laughs> you hit like a vegetarian. <laughs> I ate my 10, 15 eggs a day. And, uh, you know, I had my 250 grams of protein a day because I weighed 250 pounds. One and only Arnold Schwarzenegger. But as I got older and as I started reading up on it, I recognized the fact that you really don't have to get your protein from meat or from animals, as far as that goes. So we start going more in the direction of a vegetarian kind of a diet. Now we're doing it the right way with the right spices, all of a sudden, I love it much more than the meat. And uh, you know, the cholesterol went down to around 109. It was the lowest that it ever was in my entire life at almost 69. The diet produced something that medication and surgery never had before, actual reversals of heart disease. The biological mechanism that caused these reversals centers on the lining of our veins and arteries, the endothelial cells. They are the absolute life jackets of our blood vessels. You're young and you're a teenager, you're healthy. You could spread those out one layer thick and you'd have something that would cover six or eight tennis courts. In 1988, scientists discovered that endothelial cells manufactured the gas nitric oxide. Well, what does nitric oxide do? Nitric oxide keeps our blood flowing smoothly without being sticky. It also helps to dilate constricted blood vessels during physical activity and inhibits the formation of plaque. And most importantly, nitric oxide is a powerful force for eliminating the inflammation that seems to go with this plaque. However, scientific tests have demonstrated that when we start eating the typical Western diet, our endothelial cells are damaged. When you're getting to be in your 40s and 50s and 60s and you've been slaughtering your endothelial cells, you don't have those six or eight tennis courts. You may be down to one and a half or two, and they can't protect you. Yet according to Dr. Esselstyn, when we began eating a whole foods, plant-based diet, the damage to our endothelial cells not only stops, it starts to reverse. There's a direct correlation between a meal and endothelial function. The endothelium is the lining of blood vessels. It regulates blood flow throughout the body. It knows that a particular muscle group or organ needs more blood flow, and it dilates, it opens up. 
When the endothelium is impaired, it cannot open up. It cannot allow blood flow to increase as much and therefore impairs athletic performance. As early as 1908, plant-based athletes were starting to claim their first Olympic golds. Are you still sticking to your vegetarian diet, Mary? Very rigidly, yes. And do you find that's a benefit to you, do you? Greatly, or I wouldn't do it. <laughs> changed my diet to a vegan diet, and I set all of my personal best at 30 years old. The oldest man ever to win a world or Olympic match. A lot of people had doubted me when I first became vegan, but my energy levels increased incredibly, and my iron, my B12, everything that people said would become deficient were amazing. I thought, I'm going to make sure I'm beating them all on the track. I mean, we're all friends, but it was pretty cool to finish my Australian domestic season undefeated. And to win the Nationals was obviously that little cherry on top. Morgan Mitchell, he's tearing away from the field. This is what I always heard, like, you can't go lean, you can't go shredded vegan because you have so much carbs. But I'm standing here in the best shape of my life, easy. I already knew that processed carbs, like white flour and sugar, can lead to weight gain. But what I didn't realize is that unprocessed carbohydrates like oats, bananas, and sweet potatoes are associated with decreased body fat. An eight-week weight training trial also found that those consuming a normal amount of carbs gained 2.9 pounds of muscle mass, while those in the low-carb group actually lost muscle. A typical bodybuilding diet is a very low carb diet. So these guys that haven't had a carb in two weeks, they're walking around like zombies. I'm backstage eating all the carbs that I want. They're like, how are you eating that right now when you look this shredded? 